Hi and welcome to another lesson in the physics video series. Today we're going to be talking about the ramp, which is a simple machine that reduces effort force. If you want to lift this block from A to B, you can either lift it straight up or you could push it along this ramp. Either way, you have to use the same amount of energy, but the question is, do you want to enter a weightlifting competition or do you want to have an easier job? All right, let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at the parameters of this problem. The first and most important piece of information is that this box weighs 155 newtons. Be careful that you note the distinction between kilograms and newtons. Because the weight was given as 155 newtons, that means that gravity is already multiplied by the mass. So this mass is really 15.5 kilograms times the 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what gives it the 155 newton weight. Now you want to move this box from point A to point B. The baseline of A all the way up to point B is a 1.8 meter height. And of course, the distance from A to B along the incline is 5.6 meters and the base of this triangle is 5.3 meters. For a box sitting on an incline that has an angle of 18.75 degrees, calculated with the arctan of opposite over adjacent, we know that the weight, which points straight down, has two components, a perpendicular and a parallel component. The parallel component is the part that wants to pull it down the ramp, and the perpendicular component is opposed by the normal force, which is what's holding the box up along that axis. Your job is to push this box parallel to the ramp surface which means that you will be canceling the F parallel vector with your applied force vector if you want to move it at a constant speed. If this force F is less than the parallel force vector pulling down, the box will still slide down the ramp. But if your force is greater than the F parallel, then you will accelerate up the ramp. So for now, we will have F being equal and opposite to F parallel. The applied force F will cancel out the parallel force of the weight of the box pulling down the ramp. The first question that we will ask is, how much potential energy is developed if you have to lift the box 1.8 meters off the floor from point A straight up to point B? That's a very simple equation with PE equals MGH. So you take the 155 Newtons, which is the MG, and you multiply it by the 1.8 giving you 279 joules. So no matter which way you go, whether you go from A up to B along the diagonal or from the floor, the level of A, straight up to B, you will be spending 279 joules of work. The second question asks, how much work is done in moving the box along the ramp from point A to B? We know that work equals force times distance, but which force are we going to use? We must use the parallel force to the ramp's surface. We explained before that the angle of the ramp is 18.75 degrees, and that was from the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. Now, we know that the parallel force, which is mg sine theta, is 155 newtons times the sine of that 18.75 degrees. That equals 49.8 newtons. You are pushing with this much force you're going to counteract this force so that the force you push up the ramp with is equal and opposite to the force parallel pulling down the ramp. And then, of course, the part of the ramp that holds the box up, known as the normal force, is equal to the perpendicular vector mg cosine theta, which is 155 cosine 18.75, which is 146.7 newtons. Considering that the block weighs 155 newtons, you can see that 146.7 of those newtons are being assisted by the ramp surface itself. So we know that it takes 279 joules to lift this box straight up from the floor to the height of point B. Well, if we were to take the parallel force of 49.8 newtons and push it along the diagonal from A to B, you would see that the parallel force, which is this applied force in opposite direction, times this distance will still equal 279 newton meters or joules. So clearly, either way you move, whether it be up the ramp 
or along the diagonal, you will use the same amount of energy. However, if you lift the box vertically, you require more force for a shorter distance. You have to lift the whole weight of the box all the way straight up to the high point B to acquire 279 joules. However, if you use the ramp, you only have to push with 49.8 newtons of force for a much longer distance of 5.6 meters. So the effort force is what you're pushing with or what you're lifting with. So would you rather lift the full 155 newtons for a short distance or would you just rather push with the 49.8 newtons for a longer distance? And that's why simple machines help us because the amount of energy required to do this work is fixed, but the way we spend the energy has some room for flexibility. In the case of a simple machine, oftentimes you're using less effort force. Effort force is what you, the worker, are exerting over a longer distance to achieve the same amount of energy input into the system. And one more time, you can see the left side of this equation is 49 newtons times 5.6 meters. This is going up the ramp. That gives you 279 joules. But this is 155 newtons times the vertical 1.8 meters. That's going straight up the side. Either way, you're going to get there. And either way, you're going to spend 279 joules. However, if you use the ramp, you only use 49.8 newtons. But if you lift it straight up, as I said earlier, it's a weightlifting contest and you got to lift the full weight, 155 newtons straight up, 1.8 meters. Either way, you're spending 279 joules of energy. So in conclusion, you can see that even though you're spending the same amount of energy, getting the box from the base at A to the height at B, it's easier for you to push it along the ramp rather than lifting it straight up from the floor. I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.